Good afternoon, everybody out there in Tax Jimmy land. Um, Tom Matuska here with the Matuska Tax Jimmy studio with Amber Engels Wilder and our camera crew. We've got Mandy, Kirsten, Joss. And uh, those of you that tuned in last week, we went through the catalog, and most of you should have this by now. Um, if you haven't, make sure you give us a the call. The only people that want to have it right now is if you requested it after Late. December 18th. Everyone else should have it. So if you... If you're on our mailing list, if you ordered from us before, um, they have a pretty extensive mailing that went out. Um, our, next, some, our next one should go next week. Somebody from Maryland called today. They got theirs. Um, this is a work of art. I can't tell you. I can't commend these girls enough on this cover because it is the most beautiful taxidermy supply company cover out there. It's, it's just stunning. Uh, and not only is the cover good, um, the products on the inside, the prices on those products, um, they did a stellar job on this. I, you, you girls did a good job. I'm pretty proud to put yeah. this in anybody's hands. Um, we do not, I always say, there's, we don't carry any junk. Everything is things that we use in our customer work and we use all good stuff. We don't short cut, short circuit anything. We use uh, um, the best products that we can get our hands on. Um, the best glues, the best epoxies, the best putties, uh, the best mannequins, everything that we put into our work um, is in the catalog. So it's all good stuff. So um, if you want to take your, your customer work to the next level, you'll find it in here. Good stuff. And good job on the cover girls, on the whole catalog girls. Um, and last week we went through that catalog, we almost went through it page by page. Um, you were in Arizona, right? Yeah. And uh, who goes to Arizona at Christmas? What? I was in Arizona. I was sent for Santa, Christmas. Santa Claus is in a t-shirt, a red t-shirt. Uh, but well, anyway, Brett and I kind of went through that page by page and just hit some of the highlights. Uh, a lot of the stuff we're real proud of because there's some good stuff in there. And um, if you have any questions on anything in the catalog, you know, even if it's not what we if it doesn't pertain to what we're showing you today, don't be afraid to um, text. Hmm. Message. Comment. In. Comment. Comment. Um, and like always throughout the whole broadcast, um, like and share, like and share, like and share. We'll have our giver, uh, our giver, our giveaway winner at the, the top of the hour from last week. And then if you make sure that you like and share our video right now, um, you can actually do it throughout the week. And then we'll pick our next winner next week. And uh, today we're going to cover repairs, um, repairs and, and cleaning mounts. It's something that nobody likes to do. Everybody wants to work on the fresh stuff. They want to work on a fresh bobcat hide, uh, put it on a mannequin, make it look real nice, do the habitat. They don't want to work on something that's, you know, dirty and been sitting on the shelf for years. And a customer who's really proud of this, you know, bobcat, for instance, or deer head or fish, whatever just wants to give it a little more life and bring it in. Um, nobody wants to do that. And for years and years and years, I would take in cleanup work or fix-ups or broken fans or broken wings on a bird. And a good customer that maybe I do a lot of work for would bring it in and say, can you fix it up? You don't want to say no. So what do you do? You bring it in and you set it up on the highest shelf and you never get to it. I thought we set it down the road. Sometimes we send it down the road. Um, but anyway, every time you look up there, you go, oh my gosh, and it's just, you know you got to do it. The guy took it off of his wall. He has a blank spot on his wall, and now it's sitting on your shelf for a month, two months, six months, a year, two years. And he calls every once in a while, you get my fish fins put back on, and you just don't want to do it. And one of the reasons you don't want to do it is because you're probably not getting paid for it. It's not a major job to do it and if you just stopped everything and took that bird and reattached its wing or its tail or its you know clean its eyes or whatever it happens to be it's done and out of here and one time for the students we had a, a old taxidermist older taxidermist that some of you might be familiar with his name was Jerry Schaefer from Schaefer Studios in uh, Madison Lake Minnesota I believe and um, Jerry's an inventor and a pretty accomplished taxidermist, and he 
said that you need to have a room where you put that stuff, that you're not looking at it all the time. And he said, the reason taxidermists get burnt out is because you're not getting paid for what you do. So um, he said, if you get paid for these jobs, these repair jobs, better, you're gonna wanna do them and get them out of here and you'll feel a lot better about it rather than you know working for a couple hours on a on a fish van and getting twenty five dollars and that's what we used to do we used to get a fish in and they'd say can you fix it up and I said well it looks like we gotta fix that fan and touch up the paint a little bit and give it a coat of gloss and they'd say what's it gonna cost for that and I'd say twenty five dollars and they'd say oh I do it for that you know twenty five dollars is a deal so I would get in, go walking in here, and I'd look, $25, I just spent $25 talking to that guy out there, you know? My lights are going on, my heat's going on, my water bill's still going, my phone bill's still coming, and I just spent 15 minutes talking to him for $25. So you're not gonna come out very good. Um, once I decided that I need to get paid better, I would say, it's gonna take $50. People jumped on it at $50. And you can only do so much for $50 and you're, you're breaking even. Um, you almost need to set a minimum. I had a customer bring in a, a big sailfish. And he said, what will it take to, to make that look good? And I said, it's going to be $300. You know? and, and what I'm going to have to do is fix, fix some, do some fin work, fix the fins, repaint the entire thing. It's going to take me probably a couple days to do this sailfish make it presentable. Oh gosh, I don't want to spend that. See what you can do for a hundred bucks. That was six years ago. It's still up on that shelf right there. <laughs> and it's going to stay there. <laughs> but you got to get paid for it. If you get paid for it, you feel better about working on it. You will spend the time that it deserves. Some of these are once in a lifetime trophies. Um, these guys really think they accomplished something when they, when they caught the fish or shot the bird or shot the deer and just because it's dusty and dirty doesn't make it any less of a trophy in their eyes um, and you can make it look a whole lot better. Um, so we're going to take you through a few things um, that that we do. Once a few years ago I uh, got into cleaning trophy rooms and uh, um, I didn't really know what I was doing but a lot of the things that we do in finish work for our game heads applies to the, the cleanup work. Um, so I kind of came up with a little system and I could go on a person's trophy room and any, any of their haired animals, I treated the haired animals a little bit different than the furred animals, different than the fish, different than the birds. But you come up with a system and you can go through a whole trophy room and it's astounding how good you can make the things look. So I'm going to show you a few little tips that, that work when I go in to clean a trophy room or if somebody brings in a deer or whatever it happens to be. Um, we've got antlers that we fixed last week. Uh, we have a deer that fell off the wall and smashed his nose really seriously bad. Um, Amber's going to show you how to make that look brand new. Um, and a lot of the times, these damaged things, you don't know what to do, but you're not going to make them worse. You know? So with, with your um, experience in the taxidermy industry, you kind of know how stuff is put together. And just a little thinking your way through it, you can probably make it look pretty good. Yeah. So you're going to be talking about maintenance as far as not just for the taxidermist, but if anybody has a mount in their house, how to take care of it. Just because you have a trophy life kit, don't you, that you want to tell them about. I do. Okay. No, <laughs> you, but you have to know how to use it. Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready, you can do that. I'll, I'll use some of those products. Okay. Uh, this deer head was brought in by, by one of our staff here. He shot this in 1992, um, and all in all, it's got, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than the work that we do now, but uh, it's been hanging in his house, and I'm not sure where all, and it's gotten dirty. Um, we've got some cracks in the nose, um, the lips, it's got a little, little color problems going on. Um, it's a little faded up in the face, and we can fix a lot of that. The horns are a little dried out, and um, I will show you what I would do. The first thing I want to do is clean it off real good. So I will take a hairbrush, and these are in your trophy life kit, right? Yep. 
Um, and this has a lot of debris on it. I'm gonna leave it right on the panel. I could take it off the panel. Um, I'm gonna get a little moisture on the panel, but I'm gonna clean it up and I'm gonna shine that panel up too. It's gonna look brand new. Um, but I mean, just look at the dust in here. Now, a lot of times I'll take the air compressor. If I have an air compressor with me, I will, I will blow it really good, get any of this stuff out of here. Now this is what we do, even if we mounted a deer, a fresh deer, we would do the same thing that we're doing now. Okay, and then I started doing this because we got, we would get things that people had in bars for years and it was all smoky and dirty and grungy. And I would take carpet cleaner, and this is just a, a Walmart, type carpet cleaner. It's the foaming kind. I like white carpet cleaner if I can get it. And you, you're using it because you can actually feel the, the dirty, dirty residue it. on the hair. And I'm just going to do a part of him here. Now, I don't want to wash this whole deer. I've done that. Um, you don't know how some of these were, were done. Um, if they're on a paper form, you could actually... Soften up the form. You don't want to do that. So be careful as to how old of an amount there that it is that you're doing this to. Um, something else I want to tell you is we get things in from nature centers that have been done 50, 60, 70 years ago. Um, back then, a lot of taxidermists used for their bug proof and preservative, they used uh, arsenic. And in the old days, taxidermists didn't last very long because of the arsenic. They got arsenic poisoning and it killed them. Um, watch out when you take something in. A lot of times we won't even touch it. If, it's, if I know it was done in the you know, 20s and 30s, nah, I'm not gonna clean it for you. you know? I, might, I might put on some rubber gloves and do a real quick thing, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time cleaning it. Um, just because that arsenic is probably still viable in them. Um, now, as you see this, I've got, I've got dirt coming to the surface on this stuff. It's, it's dirty. And <clears throat> I'll spray the whole thing. I like to take a shot back. Now, depending on the condition of your animal, um, you don't want to suck the hair off. And a shot back has a lot of power. So I'm going to hold my hands over here so I don't touch it to the hair. And I'm going to suck all that foam out of there and the moisture out of there. Um, you want to wet back. And, you know, if it's really old and deteriorated, you could have a bald animal. So be a little careful with the, if this happens, don't tell Joe. <laughs> Then get the moisture off of him, get him as clean, clean as he can. Now, he should, you might want to do this a couple times, um, but he should be much, much cleaner than what he was. Now, this deer has been taken meticulous care of, and whoever's house this was in, the housekeeper is like <laughs> astounding. <laughs> Amber. <laughs> The other Amber. <laughs> the other Amber. Um, do you have certain detergents to clean smoke damage from a fire? You know. Who did I do a long time ago? 
high school, you paid me to do like 10 mounts and we, I feel it will light. We did the same thing. Um, yeah. Will light works good. The, I, a carpet cleaner, I think they're all very similar. Um, but we did that. Um, to get the smell, we talked to service guard and they said, put the mounts in a garbage sack with a, a downy sheet or like, like mm. those fabric softener sheets. And so we put birds in garbage sacks and it takes the smell out. It helps immensely. Mm. Um, but the, the wool light does help a lot. Now I'm putting, you can see I'm putting brush tracks in here. I would let him dry like this, groom him just as you would a fresh mount, but you can see all the little lines on there. After he's completely dried, just take your hand and you can smooth that out of there. You can back blow him if you want. Um, it's a little harder to back, black, back blow older mounts than fresh mounts. Um, then, if we go to the Trophy Life kit, in here, um, it's got a it's got a shine for the hide. Um, it's got a hair conditioner that will make your hair lay really nice. It's got a lens cleaner, which is an actual um, camera lens type of cleaner. It's got little dusting things. It's got um, micro applicators. Um, it's got a brush, got nice soft brushes, rags, the whole, everything you need. Um, we had people buying these for, for brothers and cousins and stuff for Christmas. Sure as a gift to take care of their mounts. Um, that's a great mount. We got them for, do we have them for fish, birds, and mouse? Otherwise, we offer an extra discount if you buy them, um, I think a quantity of eight of them to have in your showroom, and you can offer it to your customers coming in. So with the lens cleaner, um, I'm just gonna douse the, the glass. And over time, that lens on that glass gets coated with grime and grit. And I like to clean that off. Now, if I went into somebody's trophy room, I'd clean all the eye, I'd lay all the heads up, or if they're all lined up, I'd just go from head to head. I would spray on the um, carpet cleaner. I'd go to the next one, carpet cleaner, carpet cleaner. I'd come back, I'd vacuum them off one at a time. I'd go and do the lens. Um, you can get a system and you can do this pretty fast. Now look at the... I don't know if you can see on there, that's pretty dirty. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna evaluate, you know, what does the, what does the overall color of the eye look like, depending, now I'm getting, this is like a $500 clean job. So um, I'm gonna do all the best bells and whistles on this one, but if, if the person doesn't, you know, you got to talk to the customer. What kind of, um, Jim Kimball worked for me for a while, and he would talk to the customers. He'd say, what kind of budget are we talking, are we working with here? And, you know, the customer kind of shrinks and goes, oh, I got money. I can, whatever you want, you know. Uh, but it kind of, there's people that want to spend $10 to clean this deer up, and there's people that money's no object. Um, so anyway, depending on how much effort you want to put into it, um, we can paint this whole eye. We can make this eye beautiful. We can put the flushes back in just like we would um, one of our customer deer that we do now. And I will probably do that on this one. So at this point, once my eyes are nice you and clean. You said money's no object. That's what I was thinking yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, <laughs> um, once this is nice and clean, I would take my eye protect, eye frisket, and I would paint that that lens with eye protect and then we'd come in with the airbrush and we'd start with our flushes. If you go back and look at our finish videos, I think you did the finish finish work on a deer before um, and look how Amber did that, how she starts out with flushes and some um, cocoa browns and buckskins and, and uh, rich browns and then a darker brown and paint that whole eye just like we would finish one now. That would make this look like brand new. And then, you're gonna see areas like this, that when this deer was mounted, um, the lip wasn't tucked all the way down where it really needs to go. So you got this big white stripe right here. You can take, you can take pan pastels. I'm gonna sneak by you here once. And a little 
hand pastel applicator. This is a new product and we've been having a lot of fun with this. Um, it's actual powdered paint, powdered pigment, and you can take these little applicators and you see I've got this big old smiley line right here. I can paint that right out with powder. And that's gonna look much more natural. You have Australia and New Zealand watching. And people in Nebraska and South Dakota in a blizzard. Can I protect be shipped in winter months? Um, yes. We have a freeze warning on it, but we pack it well and we usually send it on a Monday. Um, any, it's, it's a latex product, so it can freeze, but it's, it can get good and cold, and like you said, we pack it good. And do you have to seal? I usually do. Those? And I take a matte finish. We have Krylon matte finish. Yes? Yes. Um, cover the eye, and you can seal that, and that will hold that pan pastel on there. But I took that big white smiley color off there. Another thing I'd like to do with this deer, um, I, I actually am jumping way ahead. I would, I would texture the nose. Whoever did the nose, you'll see they made an attempt at texturing, but it looks more like mosquito bites than textures. Texture. So I would probably strip that all off. I would repaint a base coat. I would come in and rebuild every one of those cells. If you're gonna rebuild the nose, anytime you rebuild the segments on the nose, make sure that you do every one of them. Don't skip around like this or it looks like he went through a bee colony. Um, let's see. Um, Ted lives in Canada. He's worried about it crossing the Canada border. That, I would say, you don't want to order, order in January, February for sure. Yeah, wait a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is a product that, that we've used for years, liquid gold out of the grocery store, furniture polish. And I like to oil horns, antlers, not horns. Um, this will turn horns dark, so be careful putting oil on horns, but it does work really nice on antlers. And it'll look a little overly shiny today, but by tomorrow, um, it'll look real natural. Any of you that have handled antlers before, if you have a pile of antlers and you got 10 pair from last year and one from this year, you can look at them and they look different. They're not dried out, they just look different. And uh, they're lacking a little bit of life. Liquid gold, I would, we use that on all of our antlered animals. Remember, not horns, horns will turn dark. And is there something you can do to kind of bring back the life on horns? Um, we like to use base coat sealer, life tone product, base coat sealer mixed with thinner, like 50-50 um, African animals. We brush it on and wipe it off immediately. And just be careful not to get it down into the hair. Yeah, and it seals Watch real it. good. And when you wipe it off, then it just kind of brings back some of that luster. Yep. Now that, uh, that cleaned my horn, my antler, and it also um, gave it a little bit of life. You can tell there's a, a luster here, and that will not be quite that shiny tomorrow. And when doing horns, you would probably recommend doing a little test spot on the back side first, just to make sure that you're getting the sure. results that you want. Good idea. Now, hair, res hair restorer is actually a, a hair conditioner, and occasionally, I always tell people when they're going to hang up their deer, you're gonna have something like that happen. And for a taxidermist, they don't think anything of that. For a customer, they don't know what to do. Oh my gosh, what happened? And they leave it like that. So the next time you go to their house, um, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I didn't know how to get rid of that. Well, you should have, <laughs> should have tried something. Uh, but anyway, hair conditioner or the hair restorer um, is, uh, the way I ever came up with this product. Uh, let's see, where's my little brush? We had a moose one time, and I had a beautician working for me, and this moose had two big colics running up from his armpits, 
And in those days, we tried absolutely everything to, oh, thanks, everything to get it down. There's, there's remedies like paint it with Almer's glue and brush it out the next day, paint it with rubber latex, peel it out the next day. Dippity Doo used to be a product some of you old timers probably have heard of. Um, and plaster. she's, what's that? The plaster on it. Oh, plaster, plaster yeah. Yep. Crack it off. Um, there's all kinds of things. And so I tried everything. Nothing got rid of these colics. And she said, hair conditioner, you gotta use hair conditioner. And uh, you're a beautician, go away. You don't know how to do this, you know? And uh, so she finally brought some hair conditioner. She sprayed that on and it laid down before my eyes. And uh, we've been using hair conditioner ever since. And um, that's what's in the Trophy Life kit. And you don't want to put too much, just a dusting and it'll lay down your hair real pretty. And we also sell it separate. Con in a concentrate too, I think. We sell Mix it a in little a water. 16 ounce in that eight ounce bottle as well. Okay, now with this deer, I would also, like I said, put on the eye protect. I would paint around the whole membrane of the eye. Um, I will strip off the surface of the nose. I will paint it, rebuild all of the <coughs> segments on the surface of the nose. That nose is gonna look brand new. Um, now, also I said I wasn't too worried about the, the wood. As I'm, as I'm doing my antlers with liquid gold, this is actually for wood, so let's just take care of that too. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna look like a brand new, brand new panel. But that's what I would do, you know, if I went into a customer's trophy room, I'd go to every single game head or mammal head in the area, or uh, in the room. Now, if you have a furred animal, like possibly a bobcat, raccoon, bear, um, I don't put the conditioner on because the conditioner is gonna tend to lay it down. Um, there's other products that are better for fur that will make them look good. And you gotta get that, fur typically has a lot of dirt in it over years. And if you put any kind of liquid on it, it's gonna turn to mud probably in there. So you wanna get them really, really clean before you put anything on the hair. But uh, that's what I would do as far as a game head. Um, and you can make these things look outstandingly good and add life to this. Just make sure that it's not, you know, deteriorating and falling apart. I've had them where they put them in front of the sun, you know, a window window next to it, and the sun comes in, and this hair actually gets cooked. You know, so you kind of want to watch that too. Do you want to do your thing? We're giving away a total of $100 um, divided and we're picking our top picks. We're letting our employees pick next week their top Matuska Taxidermy Supply Catalog posts. And we've had a lot um, do it, but we're going to be getting, a, you have through the weekend, we're going to be picking it next week. So for your chance, you tag Matuska Taxidermy Supply, Matuska Taxidermy, use the hashtag. So we'll be doing it through the weekend, but we've had some pretty creative. Can you flip this for me? We have had. Here. Can you do it? Oh, oh flip it? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, so last week we had come in, we had Jim Eichinger, Jared Embry, Joe Martin, Tony and Kirby Ross, which had four. That's got to be Kirby. Corey oh, Bob, Mark Wilson, Holly Yissa, Tony and Kirby, Chris Hoskins, Jason Viao, and Chris Ainsworth. So there's been some pretty, oh, and Santa at the very top, which is a good one too. Santa actually <laughs> fell in a window well. A window well. And tripped <laughs> over a light show in that picture. But it was a memorable. Took a Christmas. ladder to get Santa out of the window well. And <laughs> Santa got bruised up pretty good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, this one's fun, fun one. But if you look at this one, the caption was, a picture's worth a thousand words. And if you zoom in on the garbage, oh, there's some magazines in there. But everyone's been really creative so far and they've been really fun to see. So keep it up, you after the weekend and then next week we will announce the four um, winners. Um, 
The giveaway winner for this week's bag is either first one to tune in is Rick Peering or Megan Harmon. So Megan Harmon or Rick P-E-R-R-I-N-E. Peering. You have 15 minutes to tune in, otherwise we'll give it to a live viewer. So how, many how many pictures can they submit? Uh, yeah, as many as they want. It's gonna I be. See, I see the same creative little woodcarver here several times. There's definitely four of his. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. I think Holly four. had about four. Keep them coming. Brad Grabber had a couple. Yeah, keep them coming. They're really fun to see. They are fun. So let us see. Keep going? Yep. Okay. Um, now, the next one. Now, cleaning is one thing. You don't, like I said, you don't really want to make your living doing repairs, but doing repairs will get you more tax from your work. The better you take care of people's trophies, um, they're going to see how um, professional you can be and how good your work is, just your repair work. Um, it'll get you more trophies and, and uh, grow your business. So because even though you know you don't think this is the most favorite thing you've ever done um, don't be afraid to jump in and make take care of the people's trophies this customer um, had this deer head and apparently I think it probably fell off the wall and brought it in and although at a glance it looks pretty good um, there's some really serious damage that happened um, this deer had a septum put in the nostrils were resculpted very very nice um, and when you do that, it's kind of kind of fragile up in here, and you can see this whole part is broken. So he brought it in and wants it fixed. And so what would you do, Amber? Mm. I'd give it to Amber. No. <laughs> um, I think what we're gonna start with is just you could go through and rehydrate. Um, that is an option as far as rehydrate the whole muzzle and peel it back. I'm thinking that that when it hit um, we would end up causing more problems and damage if we would try to rehydrate so I think what we're gonna do is just take what we've got and where some of the skin has gotten shifted and lifted up we're gonna take and carefully get that attached back down to the mannequin and then fix what we can. Again, when doing fix it jobs, you might not be able to make it look as good as new, but you are going to be able to make it look dramatically better than what it was. And that's that's really all you can ask for. So, we're going to we're going to go ahead and get this brought back down and reattached and then start working on some of the skin on the inner nostril here when um, also when it hit there's little pieces on the inside because the entire septum has gotten busted out I could run a wire all the way through so we're gonna do some more epoxy work up in here and then epoxy over our big crack and retexture our nose and by the time we get all done it should look pretty good now if you had to price this somebody brings this in and they say fix it um, you would know by looking at that how much time you think you're going to have in that. I would guess. I would guess you're going to have a solid. Ooh, safe to say three hours. That's what I'd say. I would say three, three hours, hours between plus twenty minutes to a half hour talking to him out front. Yep. Yep. Sure. And then you know you'll dust the eyes and clean them up and touch up other stuff. But yeah, I'd. I would say three hours would be a and safe. And you should guess. have a shop rate. You need to calculate your. Um, how much your utilities cost, your overhead cost, um, times three hours, uh, and then whatever your profit needs to be on top of that. Okay. And then this was kind of a bad one. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is pretty bad. You can lift it up and see it move like that. It's kind of scary. So I think what I'm gonna do here is just lift up carefully so we can get in underneath this nose pad and I can kind of see the crack exposed. I'm just doing this because I, I, I'm worried about taking that skin off. I think that there would be so much damage underneath that it would just cause problems. 
This is just some accelerator to help that super glue kick a little bit faster, and I'm just gonna hold it down into place. You could also take a little brad nail, and we could even run it in. Now, when angling this, we would have to angle it just right because you've got your nostril carved out on the inside, but we could go ahead and come right through our nose pad here. And if I get it angled correctly, just come in and we can counter sink. There's a little bit of the epoxy that was on the inside that I'm hitting. Just kind of carefully tap that in there and then push that brad nail down in. And we'll go right over the top. We're gonna texture and everything right over the top of that brad nail. But you could do that in a couple of spots and that would help hold everything in place. Now, when I lift up on my finger, I can feel that no longer is that foam on the inside because all of that foam had been cracked. No longer is that moving. It's just that, that little bit of skin on top so we're gonna go ahead and put in a little bit more super glue. I think I maybe even turn it and get it to. And the best part about repairs is it's already damaged severely. You're probably not gonna hurt it worse than what it is. Right. Which is comforting. And customers, I think, are, they're pretty uh, understanding and appreciative of whatever you can do when they bring stuff in to restore it. They're not, they're not looking to get back something that's gonna look brand new. They just want you to, to be able to do your magic, do whatever you can to bring a little bit of life back. And it seems like most of the time they're real excited when they get it back, oh my goodness. Yeah, that sturdied that up a lot. A lot, a lot. Okay. Now on the side here, we've, seen, we've also got a few little areas in here where the skin has got a few little rips and tears just from the impact. I can see right here that skin is lifted. So we're just gonna see if we can get some glue down in there and apply some pressure and see if we can get that to all lay back down so that we can go ahead and epoxy over the top again. So I might even, I'm gonna lift up a little bit, see if I can get this down in there. And all that, you hear that little bit, it's just, the epoxy, the old epoxy that was inside that nose kind of shifting. Get a little bit of glue. Be careful so you don't put so much in so the where it oozes out into the skin or into your hair, that'll make a mess and you'll be able to see it. No snow yet, Randy, but it's coming tomorrow. Gonna kind of hold some of that there. Want to add here? Yes, please. Thank you. You were watching me do that with that big tip and thinking, oh boy. It's okay, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> All right, here's another um, loose chunk. I thought I had gotten them all, but obviously not. So I'm gonna work on getting this out. There's a big loose piece of, I believe it is either epoxy or it's the septum. It might be part of the septum, but we can't have it rolling around inside there. We gotta get that out. camera lady. <laughs> We're going to Minneapolis tomorrow. 
tomorrow. We're going to Vikings Bears game. Vikings Bears game. That'll be fun. Those coral bears. <laughs> oh boy, this is like a losing battle here. I'm going to get it out. I may just have to work it through the other direction. Yeah, it's coming out on that side. Okay. There we go. So that was, yeah, this thing had one heck of an impact. It was another piece of the septum. I mean, it had to hit really, really hard. I'm surprised more damage wasn't done to break that septum. That septum's a hard piece of plastic. Yeah. Yeah, and I pulled out another big chunk earlier. There's another piece mm -hmm. there, too. And when you run into things like this, make sure when you don't quote a firm price, um, kind of give the person a range just in case you get into something worse than what you thought. And don't be afraid to call them and tell them that you're going to have more time in it than you thought. Don't surprise them. Yeah, you probably won't have somebody real happy if you tell them one price and then they come to get it and it's double. Randy says give yourself extra time, those are not good. Oop -da. I thought I got all this out earlier, but I am not even close. Alright, well, that's okay. I'll go ahead and work on that one. You guys are talking on something else. I'll continue to pick that out. But now I think we'll go ahead and we're going to put some epoxy up in here and get that going. And then we can start to this whole re... This is deformed, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. But I think we'll be able to hide a lot of that with, the, with some of the Mod Podge in your easy noser. And we're going to go through and we're going to retexture. And I think by doing some heavier layer of texturing down in here. I think we'll be able to get that to where it's better than what it is. Okay. You go ahead and work on that and we'll show them another fix it we're doing. Okay. We had a customer bring a fish to us. Here, I'll bring it back over here. And um, you gotta remind people this is not a video to bring more repairs to us. Yes. No, we don't need more repairs. And uh, this fish was was kind of in a bad state of shape. Um, kind of a novice had mounted it for this person. And so in looking at it, I've done this several times. Um, I thought I can probably strip the paint off of it, soften the skin, and remount it. And uh, it, it's almost easier to do that than to uh, try to fix, you know, something that's pretty deformed. So that's what I did. I took, when I take the paint off of a fish, I will usually take a, a paint and varnish remover like Zip Strip, but I like to use the, um, I think, citrus, the citrus one that's water soluble. Um, it's not quite as caustic as zip strip. I paint the whole fish, take all of the all of the gloss and all of the paint off. Then I took this fish and I actually put him in the sink. Now he'd been mounted for years. I put him in the sink and let him soften. Um, I like to put in the water ultra soft relaxer. It helps soften the skin because fish skin does not want to rehydrate very easily. Um, this is what I took out of that fish. This was, this is what he looked like. What did they use at the top? This is all mache. This fish is, look at that. It's, uh, you know, got a little head heavy. Um, as a matter of fact, this came out his mouth and was part of the hanging device. You hung it here so he didn't go like this. Um, but anyway, we took this out. Coincidentally, I happened to have a uh, fish on fish form by Brett Wingfield and, um, Tim Perkins, that fit pretty darn good. I stuck that in, put it back together. Huh, Tim Perkins is watching, as a matter of fact, just now. This is a pretty decent looking walleye compared to what came in. I don't know if you can tell, but this was the shape that he was. This is the shape that he is now. 
Now he has some fin damage. Some of the fins are good. Some of them are pretty um, kind of damaged pretty good. I may elect to fix the fins. I may elect to put artificial fins on also. So this is in an extreme condition. This is a, a remount from start to finish. And it's gonna be as much work in this as doing the fish. So does the customer know that? Of course. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that's a, this is going to be a fun one because it's going to turn out pretty impressively good. Did you do a before and after picture? I'm not sure. We do I've this got all. to be back here. We, I know. <laughs> we do this a lot. And another one, I'll show you another one that we have. And I'm going to save this for when Tim Perkins comes to see me. And uh, he can do this one. This is a musky mount. Now I, I'm lifting up 40 pound mount. If this fell off the wall, somebody would die. <laughs> but this customer wants this. He was pretty proud of this fish when he got it. Um, it kind of didn't last well. Um, see, see the big crack down here? Um, it's a little on the dirty side. So the first thing I know, you, you look at something like this and you don't know where to start. Um, one thing that jumps out on me, at me, is the paint's not sticking. So that's a good thing for me because that means I can take that paint off real easily and repaint this fish. Um, with something like this, I'm, it it's, would be too big a job and too expensive to take it apart like the walleye, uh, but I can strip the paint off of it. I can fix the crack down the back. Um, I can fix a little bit of the damaged fins and uh, there's paint flecking off up here, and uh, we can make this look pretty musky-esque. Rob has two largemouth bass fins placed. How does one go about that? Read it again, he has two largemouth he bass. He fields at first, and now he says fins. Uh, explain, Rob. Sounds like he just wants them replaced. Oh, replace the fins? Um, if I have to replace fins, I always have a box. I have a box of a whole lot of fins, real fins and artificial fins. You can buy artificial fin sets. Um, we do that sometimes. Um, otherwise, a lot of times I will save fins that are in good shape, but I'll spread them and put them in, the bo in a box, dried, and just use them. For instance, if I wanted to fix something like this, I probably have a musky fin or a fin, big fin that I can trim to look like a musky fin if I wanted to put that in. Um, Doug wants to know, do the cheats rehydrate so you can remove the filler? Probably not. Depends on what the filler is. If it's clay, yes. If, it, if they use clay in the cheeks, we use clay a lot, like potter's clay. Um, that, that will turn to mud and it'll come right out. If they use mache, probably not. Mark wants to know what you can use to clean older bird mounts. Bird mounts are a little bit more tender. Let me grab one here. This really does weigh 45 pounds. That's why you want to use artificial driftwood. Um, Here's an old pheasant mount. Now, kind of like I said, when you, uh, it, pheasants or birds are kind of like, are kind of like uh, furred animals. This is caked with dust, and if you add any kind of liquid to it, it's gonna turn into mud. So, the first thing I would do is try to get all the dust and debris off of this bird. I'd use a brush. I would use soft air. I use air through my airbrush works pretty good. And clean him as good as you can. Once you've cleaned him and have all the Here's dust the big off. One. Do you prefer one over the other? Um, I like the big one if, if uh, I have a big job to do. You know, like this, this works pretty good. And it's nice and soft. So you got one like that for small areas. Then I would come through and I would repreen this bird and I would try to try to uh, 
realign his feathers. Bubba says Kimball special, haha. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a Jim Kimball bird. Hey, hey, Bubba. Rob says, sorry, he's voice texting while he's driving through a blizzard. Rob, turn your phone off and watch <laughs> tomorrow when you get home. <laughs> and you can kind of tell, a lot of times, um, these birds get faded, get dirty, and they get faded. faded. Um, that's kind of, sunlight is not typically good for any tax journey work. I didn't bring up the bird kit, but you also have the preening tweezers that work good to replace, to position your feathers. How are you doing there? Good, good. So I have it um, all put back together, and I got the pieces out, and now I'm just kind of re-rounding it because of where that crack was. It left a real sharp edge, so just adding a little bit of epoxy to kind of reshape some of that. Now I think we can get started with putting some of the epoxy down inside of the nose. I'm going to mix a little bit more up here. Oh. Now you can only do so much with a bird like this. What jumps out at me um, are his waddles have faded. I would probably take my airbrush and I would paint a nice rich red in there. Um, sometimes the feet, you might want to repaint the feet. And if you get all the dirt off of him, um, I, I don't like to put out anything on the feathers that's gonna, you know, like any kind of oils or anything like that. Um, I would do this base uh, just by sharpening up that base and um, this is all dirty, I would blow it off with air either out of an airbrush or an air compressor, put some new grasses on, um, clean up the wood a little bit. And if you really would... wanted to, you could even go through and re-dirt that just sure. with some Elmer's glue and just do a nice light dusting of fresh yeah. dirt. But uh, just cleaning things really um, helps a lot. Gonna have you pick a number. A number. We're giving away. Between so for those tuning in, we do giveaways every week. So make sure you like and share our video. We're doing last week's um, shares giveaway. And last week's is, we have two photo books, calipers, and a dandy noser. But we just got, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you want to switch out? You want to do that? Sure. That's We're going to actually switch That's out. Book, yeah. The dandy noser with the, or you use the mammal kit. Maybe we should do the one you used. What's We're going to do the mammal kit. So the mammal cleaning kit as one of the giveaways. So one of you lucky live viewers will get your pick a bag and you have a chance at those four items. Um, remember all the products that they talked about today are all on our website. There's an easy tab so that you can click on and it's, shows you everything that they've used and are working with and they're 10% off. So the products that we spotlight on, we're doing 10% off. Um, another thing that we're doing through the weekend, we love seeing our catalog with your pictures and you guys getting creative with it. We are giving a total of $100 away divided by four. So there's going to be four winners of that next week and our awesome staff is going to pick their top three and then we're going to let the viewers pick the fourth one. So that'll be fun. So let us Kirby, send, send more. Yeah, send your, send your pictures, let us see them. Um, tag us in them so we can find them. Some of them are hard to find. But uh, do you got a number? I do. Uh, yeah, everyone's got them already. Got it, perfect. Between what, one and 20? Yes, Tom, one to 20. Stay safe in the blizzard. Drive safe. You got a winner. Are you Ka sure? Kathy Holt. Kathy. You are the lucky winner. So I will get the bags ready and you can put whose bag you want. All right. This is gonna do okay. Oh, sorry. Kirsten, you want to hold the bag? Hey. So you got Mandy, Kirsten, Tom, and Amber. 
and you can pick one of ours bags and we'll see what's inside. <laughs> Jocks, you got this. The other three, <laughs> the other three go in for next week, so make sure you share the video. You don't have to be watching live to share. You can share throughout the whole week. We'll pick the winner Thursday. Yeah. So <laughs> Who is the winner? Kathy Holt. Okay, I'll make. So, you guys, do you have more to talk about why she guesses her? Yep. And she's just got to pick us. Kathy. Where are you? Kathy Holt, pick one of your names and why you're guessing or catching up. They will keep going for just a little bit. Anyway, kind of to summarize what, what we were showing you today is don't turn away the, the uh, repairs. It's going to get you more work. Uh, in the long run, make sure that you charge enough for your repairs. Um, don't, don't, I mean, this is every bit as important as mounting the deer, the fish, or, or uh, game head in the first place. Um, um, it's gonna, customers will appreciate it. They're gonna much, so. bring you their next trophy. Looking at this kit that we're giving away, um, you also have this olive oil spray. Tell me about that. Um, we like, Olive oil is it's a little misleading and it scares me when it says oil because I don't like to put oil on anything. But for years and years we used to use, um, we used wig luster and then we used a Fabergé product uh, on our hair and it gives luster to the hair. This is olive oil and it's a very light, light oil. And just hold it back, give it a dusting, run your brush through it and it feels, it smells really nice, and it feels really silky on your hair. Don't saturate the hair, just dust it. We use it on all of our deer, all of our haired animals, and it comes in the mammal kit. Kathy, you have two, one minute to pick one of our names, and we're gonna give it to the next person that gets the number. Um, <laughs> Also, what's in here is these guys, which are nice. Um, the girls out in the showroom like these. Microfiber, the head's removable so you can wash it. Easy cleaning. And you can clean up high. Put the bag, Kathy, she's here. Um, that's a I handy little thing. thing. She didn't hear what I won. Husband was talking at that time. She has to pick a number, or not yeah. pick a number. So, uh, Kathy, you're going to pick. Pick um, one of us. Tom, Amber. Kirsten or Mandy's bag, and one will contain your prize that you can claim. There's been a lot, you pick your person, why I'm talking real quick. There's been a lot of catalog requests. So to hit on that again, those that are asking for a cat, our new catalog, if you don't have one, but you have gave us your address in December, the month of December, your catalog's coming. We got your address, it's gonna be shipped out next week. If you have not given us your address and you don't have a catalog, let us know your address. You can private message it. You can put it in the comments, however you're comfortable with, and we will put you on the mailing that's going next week. So let us know that. Did you pick someone? She mm -hmm. did it. Her husband must be talking still. Oh my goodness. Okay. We can pick for her, can't we? We'll pick. Sure. That sounds Tom good. Pick back. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Mandy's. Why did yours not feel? <laughs> <laughs> Got calipers. Oh, good. So, Kathy, you have calipers coming your way. Next week, you are going to have the mammal kit and the two books and one other item for the giveaway. So make sure you share to get your chance to win that for next week's live viewing, which we are live every Thursday, 4:30 Central Time. Um, weather pending today was kind of we have weather coming, but we're still here because it didn't get bad enough. But we'll let you know, so follow us on Facebook. Make sure you like and follow us because if something changes, we might pick a different day of the week or we might go a little early. It kind of depends on everybody's schedules. So follow us. And go Vikings. Go Vikings. You might make people mad. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Thank we'll you catch everybody. you. Have a, have a happy new year and hope you had a Merry Christmas. We'll try to clean some of these things up and show you how they look um, next time. Mm -hmm. Sounds good.